Wars Bushcraft Survival Adventures here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, of course, with any of my little escapades, there's uh, nothing like a good challenge to start off with. So uh, today I've managed to uh, head out and come a lot further down the trail than I did last time with the vehicle. So uh, that's a lot nicer, so I can be able to get further out into the deep, deep bush a lot quicker today. But of course, I'm driving along the snow. I'm thinking, ah, I'm cruising through here now. Cruising through, cruising through. And I'll speed up a little bit. Of course, we've got some, got some deer tracks there on the one side. We've got moose tracks on the other. Some nice moose tracks right there. And then I'm cruising along. I'm like, yeah, it's getting all right. I look at this part. It's, uh, it's questionable. But I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. And of course, now, as soon as I get stuck into it, brrr, car gets stuck. <laughs> it's uh, about a foot deep there again. And whole front of the whole car was bellied out on it. So I just had to dig myself out again. But yeah, yeah finally got, got the car moving. You can see the imprints of the car mats again, where I had to... I just basically dug around the car again as as you saw in one of my previous videos i'll link it in and then i used that to get me out so now managed to back myself up up the trail there to a nice clear spot so that should be easy to spin around afterwards and uh, get myself out of here but for now i'm gonna head that way and uh, see what i can find there's lots and lots of animals out here do some exploring and you never know, just nice to be out in the woods and be by myself. There's the trusty car mats I always leave in the trunk there. And of course the shovel's always in the trunk as well. And yeah, as you can see today, I've got the, uh, I've got my fast pack, my homemade fast pack. Bear spray, I don't have any shotgun today, I figure I'll leave that at home. And travel a bit faster, and I've also got snowshoes on the top. Oh, strapped to the bag, so ready to rock for any deeper snow I might hit. So I think it's going to be patchy because it's a beautiful day out. It's almost 20 degrees out today. Ah, fantastic. So, without any further ado, let's get rocking. I'm going to leave these out here to dry and we'll come back to it. And then afterwards, spin around and I'll get a so, video. So far, so good. I'm almost a K in and I'm, I've almost been able to skirt the snow the whole way. Feet away already, but that comes from having an adventure. A bit of a broken tree here, so I have to dive around, head around this way, get into the woods a little bit, head around and be golden. Something's gone nuts here and broken these off. Got some tree breaks. Strange that they broke that high up, but they're quite young too. Broken here. Broken down here too, and then this one when it was standing, it's 18, 18 to 20 feet tall. And it broke, it snapped right in half at the top there. It's kind of strange. See another tree break there, that's about eight feet up. Part of me thinking that snow build up in winter gets so heavy up the top of our pine that when it drops, it drops down onto these poplars here and they're quite quite a brittle, no it's a fir actually, that's a young fir, so it's quite a quite a soft wood. So the snow builds up on the top here, flops down, hits the top of these poplars, they either bend and stay like that or they snap. There you go, I think that's the explanation right there. Let me know what you think in the comments. Nature is interesting, I love it. I can pick this up on the camera, but if you look carefully, I don't know why, but there's a reddish tinge in the snow. Trails all the way along. It's just over there too. What the hell is that? Yeah. Something cut itself, or did it rub marks on the on the snow? Yeah, I don't get it. Oh, no. It's more moose poo. You see.
this deep over here and it's kind of done the snowshoes, I think. Mean. Get moving. It's great to see the effectiveness of snowshoes. Look, <laughs> my foot sank down, that's about a foot deep there, and I'm floating on top of it. Same thing. Big gangly and cumbersome, but they work well. They do the job. Let me move a bit quicker too, so tipping over myself. <laughs> oh, beautiful guy. It's a good print there. It's either a big cat or, or it's that wolf I found out there. That wolf that created that scatter earlier. Right walking, walking this direction. Yeah, if it's a wolf, if it's a wolf, the claws are attracted there. I can just about make out some small claws there. So maybe it could be. There's four, four front toes, uh, one pad there. So I've got another interesting tree break here. Perfectly healthy. Perfectly healthy. Uh, is it poplar? Yeah, that's an aspen or a poplar. See, same family, same species. Uh, basically, it snapped off right up there. I'm, that's about eight and a half, nine feet up high. And then we've got these scrapes coming up or down scrapes here, scrapes here something's dug into this scrape here, scrape underneath and then on this side more scrapes here and they kind of run down this way so it looks like something tried climbing up this and then because you can see the way the bark's peeled up this is towards the, the towards where the, the break is sorry if the sun's beaming down this is where towards the break is look and then something's climbed up this and then it, it may have snapped with the weight of them climbing on it or uh yeah <laughs> or it was snapped beforehand but can't see why it would be climbing on it and climbing and then you wouldn't get these type of scrape marks if it was climbing down because those these are scrape marks from something clawing up the tree if the tree was standing it's the same here this is the trunk this one here same here coming up this tree here boom boom so i'm thinking a cat Definitely a cat to be done that. This is cool. It's amazing what you find when you're observant in the woods. Might be that tree's a little bit too small for any any size cat that I found tracks of so far. So this was later on in the year. Uh, earlier, sorry, earlier on this year that happened because that's fairly new break there. Yeah, as you see, the buds are still budding on it. It's a, what well, was a healthy, healthy sapling.
Man, this is a battle right now. This is dense. All this thick down the uh, trees right here from the winter. They're all probably going to pop back up once uh, the snow's all gone, but they're battling me right now. <laughs> That's the challenge, especially these bloody things, aren't you? Great fun. Trying to get to a specific area today just to go and scope it out and have a wander. Yeah, it's making it difficult for me. It's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Nature's uh, built a barrier. Stay out, humans. And nature's going to defeat me again today. Look at this tangled mess. I'll try and get through that and these bloody things. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to have to find another route to my uh, the area that I want to get to. Unfortunately. Right out in the middle of nowhere right now. Yeah, so my aim was to get up here. Get up into this area here. So the last time I came out I took this, this route here. Which seemed to be pretty... Pretty clear and pretty workable, but the snow got too deep around this area, and I didn't have my snowshoes with me. So this time I decided to try try a different way, which is not really on this map, but you can just about see see this right here. Hopefully it's focused, and then I follow this trail all the way up, and it was going to intersect the main trail right here. But I'm around here, and I've got this <laughs> entanglement. Plus snow, uh, yeah, so for me, for a day trip, that's not going to happen, I'm afraid. And uh, yeah, I've only got a little, my little um, tomahawk with me too, so there's no hacking through that to get through it. So I'm going to have to battle my way back through that now and head back and just do some exploring on the way back, see what else I can see uh, where, with the reference to nature. But you can see this is very, very quite young growth. It's all been forested at some point. And there's a lot of that in this area. Just came in and chopped the trees down over, over the many years now and uh, replanted them. And they've all been replanted really close together too. So it makes it very dense forest. So yeah, now I'm going to head back and then the car I left the vehicle around here somewhere, so I managed to get a lot further up last time. Uh, this time, I parked down there, right there, the last time I came. So this time, I managed to drive all the way up here. So the snow is on the way out, but in these higher, higher parts, yeah, it's uh, it's going to take a little longer to uh, melt, and uh, before we can walk up here snow free. But next time I come, I think I'm definitely I'm either going to head up this way or just drive down here, see how far down this one I can get and try and drop in to this area from, from this road instead. So fingers crossed. But anyway, let's head back and uh, get home. Have a coffee. Oh, there's the car. We had a short walk back. Finally got rid of the snowshoes. You can see my dig out area there. <laughs> uh, good adventure, nice day. Just had a grouse. So there was a stalk and a grouse just down in the bush. I'll put pictures up. <laughs> I got within about six feet of it. <laughs> Silly thing. Beautiful creature though. It was Fanning its tail out to me. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, what a day. So, for my little trips out, just bought a little bog standard kit, really. Um, just a bit of safety kit because I am up in the mountains. I am in the wilderness alone, completely alone. There is nobody near me for multiple kilometers. So if I, if I get in any trouble, I've got to get myself out 
as you saw earlier with the car, having to dig the car out, you've got to know how to deal with certain situations. So, I knew there was going to be snow up here, so I bought the snowshoes today. Figured they'd be a good option, and they were. Uh, I managed to get, a, get in a little bit uh, deeper than I would have if I didn't have the snowshoes. Um, like, a, like you saw in the video, the only thing that stopped me from getting further was just the overgrown trail. Um, on my person, I've got my trusty ferro rod, as I always carry. Swiss Army Knife Camper, that's my newest addition. Great little lock knife, fantastic. I've got uh, my notepad with a compass. It's got a lighter in there, and it's got a few other little bits and bobs as well. A waterproof notepad, pencil, things like that. This pocket, always carry a paper map. I've got multiple, multiple ways of navigating. I've got GPS on my phone, multiple different maps. I've got my watch with a, uh, a pre-selected, pre-planned route that I, I made on the Sunto app. It's a Sunto uh, Spartan trainer. Um, so yeah, I managed to put that on here and follow that. But of course, yeah, I've got the maps on here as well. I've got multiple different maps on here to play with. Um, but I always like to carry a paper map as a backup just in case because technology can fail, you've always got that in your pocket. I've also definitely got a compass with me. Right, let's start with my bag. As you can see here, I am in bear country, cougar country. I have bear spray with me. Uh, it's a, just in one of my water bottle pouches on my, on my uh, straps here. It's a good, good thing to have, uh, extremely good thing to have. because I didn't bring the shotgun with me today, so I figured I want to travel a bit quicker. And a bit lighter, so I bought just bought a bear spray. And you know what? So far, I've seen no sign of bears whatsoever out this way. Uh, they are here, uh, but yeah, we'll see. It's, it has multiple uses. It's, it's light. It's worth carrying. I got one 500 mil uh, soft flask on my strap too. I got a pouch here. This just has uh, this just has my car key and my lens cap for the camera that I'm filming you on there. I've got a normal GoPro Hero, my Hero Plus that I filmed all my old videos on. I'm filming these ones on. So all right, my compass is in here. There's my compass, silver compass. I also have a whistle. It's always good to have a whistle and a means of uh, trying to attract, attract attention in the bush. And this one here has been great. It's made by silver too. It's got a little button compass on it, plus a magnifying glass and also a thermometer. Good little bit of kit, it works, works well, it'll do the job in an emergency. Mozzie spray, mozzies aren't out, but just in case, I was uh, not sure if they're gonna be out or not. My side pouches, I've got gloves, and I've got a buff, just a bog stand buff, that can be used as a warm hat too. Throwing it around. Moving on, front pouches. As you can see, this is my homemade fast pack I'm going to be using a lot in the summer to go camping with. I've also got paste beads. Uh, if you don't know how to use paste beads, I'll uh, do a video on those in the near future on how to use them. Uh, they're extremely handy, uh, especially if you're just going to want to navigate with the, uh, with the old map and compass. They're great for pacing out distance. So, front pouch. We've got a fire kit, emergency fire kit, matches. There is matches, there's tinder in there, there's another lighter. I, I've literally got probably three light, three or four lighters on me, plus the ferro rod and matches. So if any, say I broke my, broke my leg, couldn't get a hold of anybody in the bush, I got lots to play with, lots to do, make easy, uh, easy fire with. Spare memory card for the cameras. Flashlight, I also have spare batteries for those, they're inside the bag. Never hurts to be a little bit over prepared. You see my S-Wing Tomahawk came with me. A little bit of kit to help me get some firewood if I need it. Okay, bottom front pouch. I've got my MSR trail shot. Fantastic bit of kit. You've seen that in my other video, Cathedral Provincial Park. I'll be using that again this year a lot. I also have my inReach, just in case as well, because I don't have a cell phone signal out here. And I'm miles away from anywhere. So if I need help, if I get seriously injured, I can 
bunk up somewhere, get some signal out, and uh, wait for the cavalry to come. Waterproof jacket. That's right on the front here. And then on the bottom, I have uh, my bivy shelter, my tarp, and a few bungees inside there for making a good shelter. Side pouch. I've got a very basic first aid kit. There's my spare batteries for my flashlight, some polysporin, and some bandages. Also have another lighter, some more matches. This is the kit out of my, uh, out of my ultra running vest. So, so I've got a reflective blanket in here, a fourth lighter, some matches and some paracord and some toilet roll, some TP. A little bit over prepared with the fire kit there, but that's all right. I can, in, I can interchange my kits then when I need them. Okay, moving on to the inside. Bit of food. I've got a second 500 mil flask. Of course, these flasks, you can't use them over the fire, but with the trail shot, I can get water anywhere I need, so I don't really need to worry about having to cook things. But just in case I do want to cook stuff, I have a metal mug with me, and that's my fire box. Just for making fire, cooking a bit of food if I, if I need to, if I'm stuck. I got my backhoe, a little backhoe, little backhoe saw with a Laplander blade on there. My main roll of paracord. And then inside a waterproof bag, I've just got my puffy jacket. A power bank. That was a loud noise. Huh. Power bank. Some reflective tape for marking a trail and some gorilla tape. So that's basically all I got with me today. Um, traveling light, not too heavy. I don't need to carry too much gear. So uh, yeah, basically I just come prepared just in case the worst happens. My legs a bit been playing up lately. So I figured let's make sure I've got enough gear with me just to get me out if I need to. And that all packs inside this bag nicely. And I can travel fast, travel quiet, and uh, see what, what wildlife I can see out here. Because out here. there's a lot of wildlife out here to see, as you saw by the tracks earlier, and by some of the other animal sign that we saw, the scrapings on the trees, etc. So yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave. leave a banana out, I think I'm hungry. So that is, uh, that is my gear, that's my basic gear setup. Just for my exploratory hikes in the bush. So this year and the years to follow, um, what am I doing differently with my channel? Uh, basically, I'm gonna bring you fast packing videos. I'm gonna bring you camping trips. I'm out in British, British Columbia right now, Kelowna area. And so I'm gonna be exploring the area all around. Um, also, it's going to sound crazy to you guys and a bit weird and a bit bonkers, um, but I uh, delved. I've I've delved into the realms of Sasquatch and Bigfoot. So um, yeah, I'm going to be going out to areas where sightings have been reported. Um, I'm in touch with a guy called Leon from Bigfoot Okanagan. Shout out to Bigfoot Okanagan, uh, who has supplied me with. Uh, some sighting areas to go out to, and that's what I've been trying to get to the last two times now, but the, the, the wilderness has been biting, uh, biting back a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be basically trying to bring you a non-crazy um, analytical um, research show on Sasquatch, uh, AKA Bigfoot, and uh, about in this area. Um, and other areas that I can find um, that have had sightings. Um, this area I've been trying to get to right now is an area where a hunter recently um, basically was out hunting and he had a sighting with an, a Sasquatch. Uh, he thought it was a bear initially until it stood up and uh, basically looked at him. Uh, I'm 
get more on that when I when I find out more and uh, we can meet the guy eventually hoping to get out here with him at, at some point and uh, actually uh, go over the area and what he saw and how he saw it so I'm going to try and bring a bit of a common sense view um, to this subject uh, none of the crazy stuff um, I look at it as flesh and blood and you can see by how dense this wilderness is and and the amount of people that are actually in this wilderness, you can see how a, an intelligent primate type species could be living out here and only be seen now and again. Um, but then you delve into the subject and throughout history they've been mentioned by the, the First Nations tribes here. They've, all over the world they've been mentioned and they've been seen and there many reports on them. They've been filmed, they've been photographed. So I want to bring you another view on it um, this is my view on this subject and I'm hoping you don't think I'm crazy I'm hoping that uh, you can see it from my point of view that it's just a bit of fun another excuse to get out in the bush and uh, practice the bushcraft and survival skills but have another spin on the channel as well so I hope you, you, you will stick with me and enjoy it uh, let me know what you think in the uh, comments below and Cool. If you have any questions, queries, uh, get hold of me. Um, any sightings in the uh, Okanagan area, put, feel free to get hold of me too and uh, help me out. Uh, like I said, it's uh, just another realm, another excuse to get out in the bush and explore the wilderness. It's a big world out there, so and we only live once. <laughs>